So uh, you may know that, but about Froome. Um, it's a it, it's 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 known for its um, independent council, obviously um, over the last ten years, and very much that's um, um, that's that's been a part of this whole kind of development of participation and engagement and. Um, and, the, and a very supportive council is that's for sure. Um, it's uh, in many ways, Froome is a thriving town and it's uh, got a wealth of community organizations and it's got a really excellent and efficient social prescribing unit up at the health center. And there's also a very can-do attitude here. So there's lots of things going for it, but in other ways, it's got a lot in common with other towns. It's got social divides and it's got areas of deprivation and loneliness and food poverty and this individual individualism that runs through our society um which we are looking to address here in lots of ways um and so the network we set up the, the network just after lockdown um in march um really just at this time when all these mutual aid groups were starting to set up uh, in streets across the country and we saw it as an, an opportune moment as people began to see the value of neighborhood connections and we really wanted to encourage what was happening and create a supportive network to help it grow and the bit of background to this is that um on the one hand we had a town council with a community development um department where neighborhood connections have been a thread, one of the threads in their work program for the last five years, I'd say. And on the other hand, um, in my own community activism, I, I, um, I've been focusing a lot on neighborhoods and community connections uh, for, for about the same time and, and did a piece of research for the town council around this. Um, so it, it's been on my radar and um, I wanted to, to, to do this, this project of the network and I got in touch with Kate Hallard, the community development officer, and she and I cooked it up basically, started mapping streets where these groups were, were springing up and inviting representatives to come to a meeting online. So what we wanted was to enable existing and new street groups across the town to connect with each other to share experiences to share ideas and inspiration and practical resources and support um, and that was the that was sort of initial um, impetus if you like um, we began having networking meetings every other week and we had people who had recently set up a group, people who wanted to set up a group, and others who'd been active in their streets for, for a long time. So there was a lot of shared experience and a lot of shared learning that was going on. And out of this group came a number of the, uh, what we call networkers, the representatives, who agreed to meet uh, to create a kind of steering group. And uh, we wanted to come together to look at building the organization and um, looking at our purpose, our vision going forward. And I'm um, going to tell you some of the things that we that we came up with for our aspirations. Uh, to begin with, our understanding right from the beginning was that this wasn't just for the current crisis, um, but this is going to serve the longer term aim of building resilient communities uh, across our town for whatever the future holds, with awareness of all the looming crises that, that uh, we were there. And we wanted to establish a network that was citizen-led, uh, self-organizing and independent um, in order to support flourishing neighborhoods where people know each other and actively cooperate to make things happen. Uh, we also wanted to grow grassroots power and citizen action. And we were envisaging a new democratic culture that's participatory starting from the street level. We also wanted to reconnect groups with decision-making channels in Froome and beyond, so they could be part of decision-making in things that affected them. We wanted to promote self-sufficiency through sharing our resources and assets and sharing ideas across neighborhoods. Um, and we wanted to build trust between people where they live, trust in our capacity to act and make a difference, and trust between us as citizens and with the politicians that represent us so that we can collaborate in ways that are in the best interests of the community. So 
we are now 60 streets signed up and there are others that we're still finding out about and, and bringing on board. Um, and there are some streets who don't want to join and that's fine as well. Um, but all the people who do sign the networkers get a monthly newsletter and they get regular up mail, email updates and um, they share that news with their streets. There's also a Facebook page which we use for sharing ideas and um, much more broadly used and it's it's at the moment it's being used quite a bit by people who are moving house in Froome or to Froome and it seems that it's not just um, the community of Froome, a friendly community that they're looking for, but a friendly street and that we've had quite a few examples of people moving to a place because they know that they've got good connections and a, a good sense of you know, community. So I'm um, going to show you some slides in a moment, prompt, and uh, the, just to say that um, the network is evolving in its own day, way. And during lockdown, we've seen amazing creativity from people um, in finding ways of connecting and various projects. So there have been street concerts and treasure hunts and plant right sharings and all that kind of thing, as well as a practical sport. So um, in the first slide, is there one there, Angela? First, okay, well, so you've seen the, the logo for the um, Froome Neighbourhood Network, which is quite, um, yeah, go back one. It's, um, it's, that's our new logo, which is just uh, no one's seen yet. <laughs> um, and then if you go to the next, the next um, one, that is an example of um, something we decided to do in Froome um, at Halloween when kids couldn't get out to do trick or treat and we just said let's do a window wonderland and you've probably all heard of window wonderland but we did one in in hat for halloween and there were 400 households that took part and um and it was just very lifting of the spirits i should say um people absolutely yeah they absolutely loved them so that's that's that and um, in the next slide this is from hoedown uh, this is uh, this is people getting out and removing weeds from their street um, as a way of trying to persuade the district council that we don't need glyphosate, um, that deadly weed killer, on our streets. And so it's continuing every once a month on a Sunday. People are getting out with their hose and meeting their neighbours and um, tidying up the streets. And it's led to other things, litter picks. It's led to painting of the railings along the street and other ways of enhancing our environment and just getting on with it, really, not asking for permission. <laughs> and so that's the hoedown. Uh, the next one, you'll see a picture of um, a few hoedowners. And, um, and then uh, the next one um, is a picture of um, a share box, which is outside my house right here. And um, someone's nodding, so I guess you might have heard of these share boxes. It, it's it's just worked brilliantly. It's uh, it's used by so many people. It's such a tenor of stuff, and I, I I I get a sense from people that they are delighted with this idea of sharing. Of I can just take something, and I can give something, and that feels good too. Uh, so it's uh, I think it's generating a really good feeling um, in people. And I've had some great conversations out there as well with. Uh, People who come to the other side of room because they want to visit our share box. And if I show you the next one, um, it's this is a few more have sprung up. <laughs> they keep they keep popping out all over the place. Um, maybe people in Froome are kind of used to it because we've got a we've got a community fridge and we've got um, uh, a share shop. So that kind of idea of sharing is kind of in the ether, you know. So that's the the just a little glimpse of the sorts of things that have been going on um, in lockdown. And yeah, so that's, and, and you can turn it off now. Thanks, Angela. Um, and uh, I just want to talk about a few other things we've been doing, some trainings. We've been offering trainings such as how to get the street group going, play streets, planning a street party. Um, and very recently we did one on how to have restorative conversations because something that kept coming up in our networking meetings were, was that there was, um, there was a, a, people felt um, that they, did, they weren't equipped to deal with disputes that arose in their street. And, uh, and there was a question of, could, could, we, could we find a way of dealing with this as a community rather than always going to the police or to the authorities? 
um, let's, let's think how we could do that. So we had quite an in-depth training and there's now a group of us who um, are looking how we can support the network and, and, and really share more of these kind of skills of ways of talking to people and ways of um, resolving tensions before they become conflicts, if you like. It feels really important. Um, and as, as well as that, as a resource to the network, we have um, a group of people, including myself, who trained with Trust the People, which is a, a course in community organising. And we have, um, we've, we've offered ourselves to the network as a bunch of facilitators who can facilitate people's assemblies and community meetings. So, so that's another resource where we're also talking to the town council about, about this and they are working kind of alongside us um, with this idea of people's assemblies. So some things that have uh, worked well uh, for us are really we've seen the value of the network in spreading ideas in the kind of cross-pollination um, and then some ideas really taking off and then other people kind of running, running with that. And it's a kind of like, um, yeah, it just generates a lot of activity and a lot of um, seeing something that's working, using that as a model. Um, um, there are groups that have come together over issues like protecting a green space and they, you know, the fact of engaging and in, getting into decision making together, these, these can really strengthen a sense of community and how we work together. Um, we realise that each street is different because people who live there and what their interests are and what local assets are and where one thing that the network emphasises is that we don't oversee or run any street group, uh, which we recognise as being independent, self-run and doing absolutely what's best for them. Um, we're talking about this number, the a good number, say for a, 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 a kind of a democracy, if you like it, like uh, as, um, as Simon was talking about, when we talk about our streets, what's a good number for a street? Uh, and we think something like 20 to 30 houses is, is an optimal size. Um, in my own street, there are 25 houses and 70 people. And over the last sort of five years that I've been um, kind of in encouraging you know, the community here and, and we've, well, we've been working together, I can say that I know the names of everyone on my street now. Um, and we're also beginning to see now is a number of adjoining streets connecting with each other to form a wider neighbourhood group. And there's a much more potential here for sharing resources and maybe having wider forums for meetings and, and looking at projects and issues together. OK, we're nearly there. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about our, our learnings and things we've learned and some of our challenges. So one of our challenges, which was touched upon earlier, is um, is how to be more inclusive in our neighbourhood and, um, and 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 in our neighbourhoods and in our network. Um, we want to share stories about where that's working well, and we want to be actively looking to how we bring in marginalised groups, marginalised people. Um, we we feel that the street is is a great opportunity on a street you can have a wide demographic of people and if we can get it right you know we, we, we can build the relationships which then enable us to create the welcoming spaces that people can come to. Um, for me there's also a, a big question a personal but it's also shared by others which is if we're looking to reweave the fabric of communities how do we do that whilst acknowledging the wider fabric of the natural world of which we're a part uh, so that we are really growing sustainable communities for the future. Big question. Um, and those of us uh, who have big, uh, big ambitions for the network, you know, a lot of us feel a sense of urgency that uh, we really need to get together in community to face the upcoming crises of um, social, environmental. And we feel that the stronger our networks are, the better we'll be able to respond. However, we realise that it takes time to build relationships and for people to come on board and we have to accept people get involved in their own way at their own time. Uh, we can't make things happen, but we can provide a kind of fertile ground and water the seeds when they emerge, to use a spring metaphor. Um, so um, the, other, the other interesting kind of issue question is how do we collaborate with our town council in a positive way where the ownership is with the community? And at the moment, we're getting a lot of support from the town council, which is really valuable. 
but sometimes there's a perception that the network is an extension of, of the council, which is problematic in our thinking because we know that people are more supportive of truly local initiatives, um, that they'll give more energy, more commitment, and they'll feel more rewarded if they are part of something that they feel they own. So, um, so we need to keep reasserting this is a citizens-led network, basically. Um, so to bring this back to the movement for neighborhood democracy, um, we, we feel that a network like this really lays the ground for participatory democracy as part of the picture of what communities can do for themselves in order to flourish. And if we're talking about creating real democracy and a shift in power to local people, at the moment, we don't have the local structures in place to enable people to have their voices heard in issues that affect them. Um, we see that the network could potentially be this platform, starting with the smallest unit of a street and building a system from there. Something a bit like the neighbourhood parliaments model, um, which is taken off in India, which some of you may have heard about. Um, so um, so in, in my opinion, and it's probably evident to everyone here, but to build a healthy democracy from grassroots, from the neighbourhoods, I think we, we need more than just a system imposed we need everything that makes community. We need to build relationships, get to know people with different life experiences and views. We need to have to listen to each other. We need experiences on a project towards a shared purpose, making decisions on the way. And we need to enjoy ourselves and feel a sense of community spirit and remember how important it is for our well-being as social creatures. Um, these are things that I think are fundamental and part of what will make real change towards democratic culture. So that's it. And I'm really happy to be sharing this with you and learning um, so much from um, all the different experiences that you're, you're all having out there towards this vision of neighborhood democracy. Thank you.